In this video, we're going to be tying a Dave's hopper. It's one of my favorite hopper patterns. First thing we're going to do is we're just going to pull off some fibers off of a red hackle. And then we're going to take our thread. We're just going to start at about the halfway point of the hook. We're going to leave some bare hook shank near the head. Then we're going to take these pieces of hackle and we're going to tie in a tail. It's about a third of the length of the shank of the hook. The idea here is to tie it right on top of the shank. Then the next thing we're going to do is just take our thread forward. I usually just kind of spiral it forward. Then we're going to take a piece of yellow McFly lawn. It's kind of like a yarn. Floats nice and high. We're going to tie that in right on top of the shank here. With that yarn, I'm going to take it and build a little bit of a loop here at the back. This will kind of be the, the butt of the hopper. I just capture that loop. Oop, kind of closed it there. And you can make this, it's kind of personal preference on how big you want to make this loop. And then we can capture that yarn. Then we just take our thread and spiral it forward. And the idea here is we do want to build up a bit of a thick body. So that's the reason for kind of taking our yarn back and forth. Then you could take this yarn, just kind of spread it out a little bit. Now we're going to take that yarn, we'll double it over itself again. This time I'll kind of take it down the side of the shank, kind of building up a little bit of width on the body. Now the next thing to do is to tie in a hackle for the legs. In this video I'm just going to use a dark bar ginger hackle feather. It kind of has a mottled look. It's just one of my favorites, but you can just use a regular brown hackle. It'll work just fine as well. Tie that in there at the back. And then we'll take our thread forward. And we're going to take this McFly lawn yarn. We're just going to wrap yarn around the body. If you have a few loose fibers, I usually just take them and kind of separate them from the hunk and pull them tight. I'll kind of help keep them in, in check. You want to try to build a nice smooth body. Smoother the better. Once you get to the front there, you can see I still left a lot of room up there by the head. That's exactly what we want. This yarn just kind of got wrapped around everything here. Then you could take that hackle feather. We're just going to spiral it forward. And sizing this hackle feather doesn't really matter too much. We want it to be nice and long because we're actually going to trim it here next. And we're going to take our scissors and we're just going to trim all that hackle. So you get some nice blunt fibers. I use a long scissor, like a hair scissor for this. And 
The next thing to do is to take a mottled turkey feather. I've cut a turkey feather here that's about the width of the gap of the hook. We're going to tie this in nice and long. We want it to hang past just past the butt there. And I like it to kind of wrap around the body of the fly. So just kind of lay it on top of the shank, pinch it into place, and nice loose wrap capture it. And the next thing is to tie in the legs. For those, I've just taken some pheasant tail and I just tied a little knot in the legs. And I did that on two of them. And then what I like to do is I kind of match them up. And I just trim the butt ends there so that they're even. Then you can super glue those. I'll go ahead and do that real quick. I usually like to super glue the ends and the knot so they don't come undone and they stay together. I just use a little bit of brush on super glue for that. And we're going to tie these in so that the knot just falls right at the back of the fly. I want to make sure we tie those in on the side of the fly. And we just do the same thing on the, the other side. I want to make sure we get them nice and even. And we can trim out the excess. And I'll just take a couple wraps down to the bare hook shank and then back up onto the clump just to make sure things are secure. Sometimes some of these hackle fibers prop up the wing just a little too much, so I'll get in there and just trim out. There we go. Now we're going to tie in the collar. For that, we're going to use a nice clump of deer hair. And I do stack this portion of the deer hair so that the tips are nice and even. We want that collar to reach back about halfway down the body. So I just kind of pinch that deer hair into place. And I trim the butt ends a little bit just to kind of clean them up. I'm going to lay that right on top of the shank. I'm going to take a couple nice tight wraps and pull tight. If you make your collar just a little too long, like I just did, I'm going to redo it here. Just take another clump of deer hair. You don't want that collar to reach back too far. It's a common mistake when I tie these flies is I usually make the collar too long, so you have to make it a lot shorter than you think. A lot shorter than you think you need.
There we go. And once you've built that little collar, we're just going to take this deer hair and we're just going to force the majority of the clump back out of the way. Jump our thread to just in front of all of it. Then we're going to take a nice big clump of deer hair. And we're going to trim the tips of it off so we just have butt ends. I don't want any of those nice fine tips. I want just blunt ends. We're going to take a couple loose wraps and we're just going to let that deer hair spin around the head. And I'm going to take all that deer hair and push it back up onto itself. Take a couple tight wraps right in front of it. Then we're going to do that once more. couple loose wraps and then pull and let it spin want to make sure that we do leave enough room right up by the eye for us to get in there with our thread and tie the fly off and then you can whip finish Kind of tough to whip finish with all the deer hair, but I do it just by holding the whip finish in my right hand and then pulling all the deer hair back with my left. It takes a little bit of practice. Now, once you have the deer hair already you kind of stroke it forward now we need to trim it for that I just use a razor blade and I'm going to trim a nice blocky head I start with the bottom first and you can do the sides And we can do the top and when you're trimming the top you want to make sure that you trim all the way back to the collar but you don't actually want to trim the collar itself so when you start to get close you can just kind of stop and finish it off with your scissors then you can just kind of trim out the few extras that you missed. And if you like to round the edges a little bit, you can do that with your scissors. Some guys kind of like that blocky shape.
And that is about all there is to the Dave's Hopper. Nice classic hopper pattern. It's caught a lot of fish for me over the years. Floats very, very well as well. And you can find all the materials to tie this fly on our website, inleriffle.com.